This is the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, the prancing horse's alternative to the ever-growing league of super luxury SUVs. Like most of those blinged up soft rotors, it too can seat four adults and has four wheel drive. But this is not a hulking truck pretending to be a limousine. This is Ferrari being stubborn and refusing to follow the herd. This is a genuine sports car. And this is Targa Tasmania, Australia's greatest road rally, which attracts an eclectic group of supercars for a seven day jaunt around the Apple Isle. Well, sounds like a perfect test for our first drive of the GTC4 Lusso. So we're actually in the tour section of the Targa Tasmania Rally, which is not the competitive element of the event, but rather a great way to enjoy your road car. There are some restrictions on it, and the fact that we don't have to wear racing suits, it doesn't have to have roll cage, and we don't have to wear helmets, but we also get access to the fully closed road stages, but have a speed limit on them while we're there. And I'd have to say, Tasmanian roads are absolutely epic. So, you know, really it's just a chance to enjoy your car without any oncoming traffic coming the other way on some of the best bits of tarmac in the country. And right now, I am sandwiched between $4 million worth of prancing horses. In front of me is an ultra-rare LaFerrari, the only one in Australia. And behind me is an F12 TDF, the hardcore limited edition version of that front engine two-seater. Epic, epic. And there's a couple of 488 Spiders here. There's some old Ferraris. Uh, it really is birds of a feather flocking together. And the thing about this car is it actually really suits this event quite well because it is a grand touring car. Most of the Targa Tasmania is actually spent driving around the country in between these closed road stages. So we're out here on the highways, just toddling along at you know, normal speeds and it's really quite comfortable. Seven speed dual clutch automatic, left to its own devices, is smooth and unobtrusive. The engine in this car is particularly quiet at highway speeds, but then you can do this. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, does it come alive. Anyway, so enough about the event. What is this car all about and what is it doing here? Well, it's kind of the anti-Ferrari. It's this SUV that Ferrari refuses to make. It's four seats, it's a grand touring car, but it's also a genuine sports car. And this car replaces what was called the FF before. It's the evolution of that concept. And with it, it comes a whole bunch of new refined areas. It still retains its lush leather-lined cockpit with its unique four-seater layout, but it elevates Ferrari into the 21st century in terms of connectivity with a new 10-inch touchscreen multimedia system that not only looks great, but is easy to use. And the front seat passenger also gets their own digital screen that can display revs, speed and g-forces or a compass or the Manitino settings. They can also take control of the audio system and change the tune or radio station and can search for destinations within the sat-nav. There's also a new steering wheel that is the next evolution in Ferrari's F1 inspired setup in that it houses the controls for ancillaries such as the indicators, wipers and headlights, as well as the big red starter button. Well, if you don't believe me how practical it is as a four seater, well, just look at this. There is genuinely heaps of space back here. Um, we've got plenty of leg room, there's decent headroom. It's really airy with this big glass panoramic sunroof and there's all the mod cons you need. There's a little center console here with a couple of USB chargers to keep the mobile phone and the iPad up to power, rear air vents and a couple of bottle holders. What else would you need? And what about luggage space? Well, check this out. There's certainly enough room in back here for day bags for at least four people on a weekend away. Nestled right up against the firewall under that gloriously extended nose is an updated version of the 6.3 litre V12 that features new internals and results in an increase of peak outputs to 507 kilowatts and 697 newton metres, enough to propel the 1800 kilo shooting brake style wagon 
from 0 to 100 kilometres an hour in 3.5 seconds and onto a top speed of 335 kilometres per hour. And what an engine it is. Like the car, it's got this duplicitous character to it. It's really quite smooth and refined. It's like a sewing machine in the way that it revs. Just beautifully linear across uh, until it reaches its 9,000 RPM ratio. And then when you really get stuck into it, it just comes alive with this glorious V12 whale. And I'll tell you, this thing will wheel spin in third gear. It's like that much grunt. It's absolutely epic. And when it does, you certainly know about it because this steering wheel lights up like a disco in front of my eyes. It's still relatively stiff in terms of a suspension, but it's a Ferrari. Why wouldn't you want it to be? But uniquely, this car also has all-wheel drive. It's got a unique two-speed gearbox on the front of the engine that drives the front wheels, whereas most of the torque is sent to the rear wheels like a genuine sports car. And I'd have to say in some of the slippery conditions that we've experienced, I'm glad it's there. It gives you that element of security that when you really tap into its performance, it's not just going to snap sideways on you. Well, it shouldn't come as that much of a surprise, but this GTC for Lusso is absolutely brilliant. It is, of course, a Ferrari. It's fast, it's full of passion. Those two elements we take for granted. But as a four-seater, relatively practical grand touring car, it is epic. And as we've proven here at Targa Tasmania, it is perfectly suited to long-legged cross-country cruising interspersed with the odd backcountry blast. 